Hello guys and welcome back to the SCPL. I'm Kix, joining me is Rapid, and we're about to move into game three of Naz versus Ash. Yeah, 2-0 up for Naz, and you might have expected that just by looking at the roster. Uh Eon Zerg and Terror, both superstars of the non-Korean uh, you know, Brood War scene and uh, both winning their games sets us up for the potential 3-0 if Naz can take this next game down. Yeah, and it's going to be up to their captain to do so. It's Dragon. Now Dragon playing in some Protoss here, so he's going to race pick to his Zerg. Uh, his Zerg isn't as strong as his Protoss, but I mean, it's still pretty damn strong. So uh, his opponent here for Ash is going to have his work cut out for him. It's Val. This is going to be his debut game entirely in the SCPL. Hasn't played a single game so far, uh, so not sure how good he is. I haven't really heard too much from him outside of the season, not really seen him in too many other tournaments. Uh, so we could see how he's going to do here against Dragon as they move on over to Colosseum 2. Uh, Colosseum 2, a desert tile set map, of course, uh, from 2009. Uh, we've had two ZVPs on here so far. It's gone in the favor of the Zerg in both of them. Uh, but could we see Bal with the upset here? As I said before, we've seen bigger upsets, so it's going to be up to Bal here to put a point on the scoreboard for, uh, uh, for Ash and avoid a 3-0 sweep. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to be able to do it, but I, I would say that, you know, Dragon is pretty good, so Bal's going to have his hands full. I always like to kind of watch players who feel confident race picking just because you think to yourself, hey, you know, they're going to be strongest with one race, but uh, it just depends on how comfortable they feel with uh, each respective matchup. So, uh, yeah, I just want to see how it plays out. Yep, and we'll do that right now. As starting us here in the top left-hand position in the teal, fighting for Naz, it's their captain, it's Dragon. Yep, and his opponent in the bottom left-hand corner for Ash is Val. Yeah, now Val, a little bit of an unknown entity in the tournament, so a little bit hard to say how this game is going to go, what the players are going to do. I mean, I've seen Dragon TVP before. Uh, he is very good at Macro Zerg. I mean, he has shown off games uh, where he has done stuff like 3 Hatch Hydra all in. I believe we've even seen a Zergling all in from him as well. So, Dragon, a very hard player to predict. One of the best players in North America. Arguably the best Canadian player uh, himself. And strong at two races. So, a, a cool opponent uh, for Bal to have. Yeah, I, I, I'm actually just kind of... Uh using these games to you know learn a little bit more get a chance to see what all the possibilities are uh you know um i uh you know never you know claim to be a you know a superstar genius at this so i'm just trying to you know take every opportunity that i can kicks to you know get uh, as much information from every game that i get a chance to watch and you know this is the this is the big secret is that you know commentators are actually just spectators who have a microphone in front of them so yeah. that's why it's actually really cool to uh you know cast tournaments like this where you can uh, you know read twitch chat and hear other people's opinions about what's going on so you kind of get a broader perspective uh, of what's going on and then hopefully you know share that perspective with uh with more people and kind of collectively figure things out together uh, i mean i may know a few things but uh, it's always nice to kind of get together with a bunch of other people and watch brew uh regardless of what position you're in yeah, being a caster certainly gives you a weird... I mean, I first learned this in 2015 when I started, and it gives you kind of a weird overview of everything that's going on, and it kind of makes you really think about what you're saying a lot of the time. But we've got an overpool coming in from Dragon, uh, and a gateway first coming in from Bal, so uh, quite possibly the best build he could have gone for against this gateway first. And I mean, Dragon's getting out lucky with the scouting as well, so... Gonna kind of normalize again. Um, I mean, it... The weird casting overview is kind of strange, but the good thing for me with the SCPL is there's been so many games that we've really sort of seen certain players evolve, certain teams evolve for the better as well. We've seen some great storylines so far. Uh, obviously the storyline of round two with Group B where it was really down to the wire of who was going to make it into the playoffs between Red, Naz, and Soul. 
And, uh, I mean, hopefully we'll have another good storyline that, like that here in round three. Yeah, I do really hope so. I, and that's the best part about STPL is that it's like such a long tournament, you get a chance to kind of see these storylines uh, evolve. But to talk about the game is it is actually kind of heating up. Expansion just now being thrown down uh, by Baal. And on the other side, uh, you know, six lanes out, or actually eight, I think it's eight. Yeah, yeah, with the two trailing behind. Um, but th there should be more than enough here at the front door. Even though there's no cannon up just yet, it's two zealots and that should be more than enough. Or three zealots actually at the front uh, should be more than enough to hold these lanes off. Yeah, now uh, Neo Ch or Neo Chem in chat thinks that Zerglings can get through the top of the gateway. I'm not too sure the walling on this map process is kind of strange, uh, but we'll have to see if that does come into play a little bit later if Dragon does go uh, to try and do something. The cannon in a bit of a weird position as well. If Hydras come into this high ground, uh, they're going to be able to snipe that very quickly. Um, I mean, we see the three hatches coming in for Dragon as well, so. It doesn't look like he's going to be doing anything too crazy for now. We saw Lair before Speed as well, so no crazy Ling all in uh, going to be coming in. We've got our Pylon coming up on the high ground, and that will be to give him a few more options of cannon placement. Obviously, if you zoom out slightly, uh, you'll see that there's this cool high ground pod over this sort of open area at the front, so it makes it a little bit easier to defend. Yeah, uh, uh, high ground right there. I think uh, we saw be, I, I guess, kind of a, a bad thing. Uh, I, as, what was it? Uh, was it Terror? Was it? No, it was uh, uh, Dragon. Some, uh, some, no, not Dragon. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, we saw somebody drop a tank uh, or a couple tanks on this high ground with a bunker. Uh, I think it was a couple days ago. Oh, it and was... it's basically impossible to bust. Yeah, it was someone doing a two. It was someone for Bull taking down Burst, I believe. Yeah, Fly I Mio, can't remember I who it was. Fly Mio, I think, with the two two factory. Yeah, you're right. Okay, great memory kicks there. But yeah, I, I had no idea that was that strong a position, but he really made it look super good. So, um, you know, unfortunately, there's not really the same opportunity for Zerg right there, but, you know, this time it's going to be kind of the opposite illustration. Hey, it's a good place to put a cannon that will make it pretty difficult, even if Lings can sneak by the top side of that gateway. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have the Stargate coming in for Bal. So Bal playing very standard right now, not willing to, uh, not willing to risk anything either. And now one thing Bal does have knowledge of as well coming into this game is he knows that Dragon is a Protoss main. He knows that Dragon plays PvZ as well. So it's going to be kind of hard to get a one-up on him on there. Dragon probably knows every single trick in the book that Protoss has to offer in the PvZ matchup. And that's what makes players who race pick a little bit stronger, uh, because they know the matchup from both sides incredibly well. Uh, now whether or not that's going to come into play, uh, not too sure, but you can see Dragon going for a Spire off the back of his lair, likely for those early Scourge, but it's not unknown to see Dragon to really punish a Protoss player for not getting enough anti-air. Yeah, I mean, that's the... the... I mean, think about Protoss is that usually, especially if they go for kind of like a, you know, a Bisu-esque build, it's going to have enough anti-air to kind of persuade uh, the uh, the Zerg player not to go Mutas, right? I mean, that's kind of a, a big part of it. But if you don't commit enough to it and also don't scout what the uh, the Zerg is you know, going for, uh, yeah, you can get punished for not having enough anti-air. You yeah, know, we do see four Scourge popping out immediately. Going to be going after this Corsair. Uh, Bell does need to make sure this Corsair lives because, oh, and he loses it. That's actually a pretty big deal. <laughs> uh, okay, well, uh, that is actually, like you said, very big deal because when you kill the first Corsair, it does open up the potential for you to go Mutas, and that's exactly what Dragon is doing. Yeah, and the thing is, Stargate, there's actually no other Corsair popping out. There isn't going to be either. Because these Scourge will be able to kill anything that comes out now. Are we going to see Bell know about the Mutalist switch? He should have a feeling uh, that it could be coming, but the trouble is he doesn't have his Templar Archives yet. He is building a cannon in his main mineral line, but this is likely to just get rid of the Scourge, so this could really catch him off guard. It looks like it will do. Yeah, already shutting down that second base kicks and um, I mean, if he doesn't just target down the Nexus here, there's plenty of vulnerable spots in the main. In fact, if he just kills that one cannon, I, I, I don't know what to do at that point. Yeah, I think Val is kind of checkmated in this game so far. I mean, he's lost 
or he's at least gonna lose his early expansion. He's trying to panic build Dragoons. He's got six gateways, but only with one base economy. He doesn't have enough money to build out of all of them. And I mean, this is kind of a do or die situation with this Zealot attack. He's gonna send all of them straight into the main to pull the Muters back. And he does manage to save the Nexus because of this. That's actually kind of impressive. I definitely did not expect that to be the situation. Um, does he actually have extra Scourge back at home? Um, looking around for them, I don't actually see any. Because if he could take down that, uh, you know, the only Corsair that's out right now, obviously that would kind of give him a kind of a, another chance for these mutas to be a little bit more useful. Uh, but right now they're doing a great job clearing up all the Zealots back at home. That was the attempted counter. And yeah, he did lose a bunch of drones, but it's not like he... Uh, you took critical damage because of that. Yeah, I mean, the big thing is here, this wasn't anything but a band-aid for Val. He knew he had to make something happen. And this did buy him enough time to get the pylon up in the natural. He's going to get a cannon up as well. And he's got a couple of Corsairs now, a good number of Dragoons. And he may be able to use this to sort of piggyback his way into the later stages of the game. He's obviously taken a lot of damage, but it's not all over for him like it would have been if he'd not gone for that counter. He's going to try to kill off the cannon, but he's going to have to do it in the face of double Corsairs and two uh, Dragoons on the ground. And man, these Corsairs are really going to town. So I think he's just trying to get as much value off the Mutas as he can before he kind of runs back and lets them heal up and kind of maybe regain their usefulness some other time. Yeah, now we're going to see a seventh Tatry, I believe this is being added on at the third base. So it looks like uh, Dragon's answer to this is good. Oh, wait, that maybe. I think that's a sick factory. It's a sick factory. I think he's going to go for a big Hydralis attack behind this. He knows that the Protoss player is weakened. He did do a lot of economic damage. That was a lot of lost mining time. And he's forced a lot of extra cannons. And there's a lot of Dragoons now as well. So a big, big Hydralis flood could actually do wonders for him. And I mean, we, we're starting to see a big swell of Hydralis coming in from the main and natural hatcheries. And I can only imagine it's going to be the same at the third base as well. Yeah, I, I mean, right now, this is kind of not panic mode, but Baal should know that he has to weather the storm, right? Uh, <laughs> he doesn't actually have a lot of information that this is coming, but just kind of by feel, you, you know that you've got to kind of batten down the hatches, especially after taking a little bit of damage earlier. And now he's going to realize, wait a second, what is coming my way? He might think it's more mutas, but he should recognize the number is the same. So what else is out there? Yeah, and the other thing is, ironically, you say weather the storm, and storm is the one thing that Val doesn't have yet. His Templar archives are only just now finishing <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. Oh, and he's seen the Hydralis now. Yeah, turns out, uh, you know, Corsairs don't really do that great against Hydras. There's no D-Web here either, so, uh, yeah. yeah, basically nothing they can do. Yeah, no, he's going to have to add on a lot of cannons, and that's one thing he can't really afford right now either. Uh, he's going to have to try and hold on the best he can with the units he has. And I mean, the units are going to slowly start to go down. And I say slowly, but those Corsairs are ripping. Uh, they're just scouting everything, I think. He's just wondering, do I have enough to bust? He's seen the entire army at this point, and he knows how many Hydralis he's got. He has plus one attack finished, and that looks like Dragon seen what he's needed to see. He looks like he's going to go for the bust. Yeah, here we go. Bus commencing here, Kicks. Zealots trying to like just buy a second of time, but that's about the only time that they last for. Now, one thing that you do need to do is high is uh, defend your uh, your overlords. There's two of them here, so they're kind of hard uh, to uh, you know kill. But I mean, if those go down, one DT kind of wipes this out. So pretty important. But it looks like with Storm uh, not done and no not enough energy on these high Templars, that's gonna do it. Uh, Nothing here to defend. GG Baltops out and Dragon makes it a 3-0 victory for Naz. Yep, he does indeed. Now that does mean uh, Naz do take the victory for the week. Uh, but if you are tuning into the SCPL for the first time, it, uh, all four games count towards the final results. So all four games will be casted. So we'll be back in just a minute with game four. See you guys soon.